I am not sure if I love the majestic waterways or the magnificent structures that carry us across them more. Whether it is an old cavalier truss bridge, a regular concrete bridge, swinging bridge, old bridge no longer in use, small bridge over a creek, or a modern suspension bridge. I am in awe of all of them, and I find myself enjoying crossing them at each and every opportunity. Today, I am taking a motorcycle ride and will be seeking out a different kind of bridge. Indiana with Melinda and we are having an absolutely wonderful time visiting and spending time with our parents. You know here in Indiana there are about 98 covered bridges and I am taking a motorcycle ride today and hope to see eight or maybe up to 12 of them. They are here in Fountain and Park counties and I was hoping Melinda would go for a ride with me but, yeah, I did promise Melissa that I would go for a ride with her while she is here. And I'm anxious to go for that ride on her new motorcycle. But when I found out that today's ride is going to be more than two hours, I said, no way. I realized that my limit on the back of a motorcycle is about two hours. Now, a longtime friend of ours is joining me today. And I look forward to this ride and checking out some of those covered bridges and the route, even though Melinda's not going with me. But as always, I will be sharing some interesting information about our route, the covered bridges, and any other place that we end up stopping for the day. My friend Richard takes the lead on the first part of our ride today, as he will take me to two bridges in Fountain County. We head through Williamsport on our way to a great cantilever truss bridge that crosses the Wabash River on County Road 200, the old Williamsport Bridge. We are taking these back roads on our way to Highway 41 where we will be picking it up just south of Attica. I will list all the stops I make and put them down in the notes section below. We need to take extra caution as there are a lot of tree branches and debris on the road after a storm came through last night. Praying the tires do not get damaged. I have been wanting to ride my motorcycle on the route that we are taking today ever since I came here in October of 2019 with my daughter. And at that time, we visited beautiful Park County during the annual Covered Bridge Festival. I absolutely love bridges as I have pointed out in some of my other videos. And I am excited about visiting some of the magnificent old wooden covered bridges in Fountain and Park County on this ride today. You know what? It's been a long time since I've been that way. I explained to Richard that my check engine light is on, so we are going to stop at a gas station. From past experiences and talking to a tech at the Harley dealership, it could be one of many operations issues. At this point, nothing sounds off and everything seems to be running fine. But I want to check the oil level and the pressure just to be sure. We pull into the station and I consult my owner's manual to make sure I am not missing anything. The oil levels are fine and there is no oil pressure light lit up. Everything seems to be okay. I decide to ride down the road and see if the light goes off when I restart and ride a little. Our route today has us going in the direction of the Harley shop. I am just hoping we do not have to make that detour. I really want to see those covered bridges. And we head towards the ones here in Fountain County. The first bridge on our stop today is the Cades Mill Covered Bridge which is located at West Cades Hollow Road, approximately four and a half miles southwest of Petersburg, Indiana, here in Fountain County. Built in 1854, 
it holds a status as the state's oldest covered bridge still in its original location. Built to help Fountain County's early settlers travel to a mill at Cole Creek, the span is one of three historic covered bridges remaining in Fountain County. It has served as a pedestrian bridge for decades, bypassed after construction of a new concrete bridge in 1976. In 2019, a covered bridge contractor assessed the bridge and discovered a broken cord, which is a serious structural compromise that unless repaired, could cause the 150-foot bridge to collapse. The Fountain County Art Council Historical Committee has been raising money to complete rehabilitation repairs at an estimated cost of $400,000 to $800,000. All right, off to bridge number two in Wallace. Wallace. In Wallace, all right. Yes, the check engine light is still on. I will call the Harley dealership at our next stop. Before we go to the next bridge, we stop here in Wallace at the Highway 341 Cafe. This will give me time to call the Harley-Davidson dealership in Terre Haute, Indiana. I just love eating at these types of places and I'm wishing I was hungry about now. I love looking at their memorabilia, pictures, and all those Wheaties boxes. One of the owners, Linda, shows me around. She turns on the lights to the stage where they often have live music. They hold God, family, and country in high regard here and are very supportive of our veterans. I even understand Trump Jr. ate here one time when he was in the area hunting. So you're here all the time. What's your favorite part about, what, what do you love the most about this place? Um, yeah, they have gumballs. Gumballs, <laughs> perfect. <laughs> now that was cute. We get something to drink and I call the Harley shop. They tell me if the light is still on to bring it on in and they will check it out. Thank you so much. You come back and see us. And Leaving the Highway 341 Cafe. Linda was wonderful. Now I'm going to head over to Terre Haute to the Harley shop. It's off. And the check engine light is no longer on. Guess I'm not going to have to go to the Harley shop today. Good. Now we head the half a mile southeast to the second bridge in Fountain County. Oh, and by the way, the Harley shop did tell me that if the light went out, I should be good to go. The Wallace Covered Bridge was built in 1871 and it crosses Sugar Mill Creek. And like so many covered bridges, it is in need of some major repairs. The substructure and the superstructure both have been patched and repatched. The abutments were originally of cut sandstone, but they have been supplemented over the years with poured concrete. The bridge was bypassed long ago to vehicular traffic, but it remains open to pedestrians. We head back towards Wallace and take Indiana 341 and Indiana 234. And back on to Highway 41, I take the lead. Park County, which is where the next seven bridges on my list are located, is about 60 miles west of Indianapolis and is known as the covered bridge capital of the world. There are about 31 covered bridges here, each with its own unique past. In October, 
Many come to the area for Indiana's largest festival, the Park County Covered Bridge Festival. Rockville is a good place to start when visiting the festival, but the festival actually takes place all over the county in different locations. We will be eating lunch today in Rockville, and I will share some information about Rockville and more about the festival shortly. After the beautiful 26 mile ride, we come to our next bridge, the Melcher Bridge. We park the motorcycles and walk down to the bridge. Sad to say, this is yet another bridge that is showing its age and in need of repairs. In 2022, during a routine inspection, a crack was found on the bridge and it was shut down to traffic. It crosses the Leatherwood Creek east of Montezuma, Indiana, and it is a single span Burr Arch Trust covered bridge built by Joseph J. Daniels in 1896. We get back on the motorcycles and head to our fourth bridge. About three miles down the road, we come to Sims Smith Bridge. Finally a bridge I can ride across. The Sims Smith Covered Bridge is east of Montezuma, Indiana. The single span Burr Trust Covered Bridge structure was built by Joseph A. Britton in 1883. The bridge is 101 feet long, 16 feet wide, and 14 feet high. This was Britain's third Park County Bridge. It was named for a nearby landowner, Simeon Smith. He lived in the county from about 1885, and the Smith family retained the same property through 1990. When US 36 was surveyed in the 1920s, the bridge was saved by rerouting the highway. And not too far down the road is another working bridge. The Phillips Bridge was built in 1909 by Joseph A. Britton. It crosses the Big Pond Creek, also called the Rocky Run. It is 43 feet long with multiple king posts. No arch, just one span truss. The west downstream truss has been reinforced with an iron beam. The foundation is made of concrete and it was re-roofed, re-sided, and repainted in 1991 for the cost of about $7,000. I am thinking these roads would definitely not be roads Melinda would be enjoying today. Not sure I am enjoying all the bumps, but the scenery and getting to see these bridges makes it all worth it. About three and a half miles from Phillips Bridge and just east of Mecca, Indiana, we come to our sixth bridge. The Mecca Bridge. The Mecca Bridge was built in 1873 by Joseph J. Daniels and crosses the Big Raccoon Creek. It is 150 feet long with a burr arch, one span truss, and a hewn stone foundation. Original cost of this bridge was about $7,650. In 1980, funds were raised to repair cable cradles on the bridge. A bypass was built in 1965 and the bridge was blocked to vehicle traffic, but you can cross it at a walk as it clearly states on the bridge. Now, do you know why it says cross at a walk? Well, it is actually an instruction to horsemen to walk their horses across the bridge as the shod hooves of a galloping or trotting horse can damage the wooden floor planks. I found that to be quite interesting. We load back up on the motorcycles and head towards the town of Mecca. The Mecca Historical Society bought, moved, and restored this little schoolhouse, which is near the west end of the bridge. At Christmas time, the bridge and schoolhouse are decorated, Christmas caroling is held in the bridge, and a sunrise service is held in the bridge on Easter.
After another six mile ride, we come to the Roseville Bridge. This is also known as the Coxville Bridge. It crosses the Big Raccoon Creek near Roseville, north of Rosedale. It is 263 foot long burr arch two span truss bridge with a cut sandstone foundation. Original cost of this bridge was about $10,000. The original bridge on this site was built in 1865 by Joseph J. Daniels, but it was destroyed by fire. The second bridge was destroyed in 1910 by arson, and this is the third bridge at the site, which was built by J. Brooks and Van Fossen. I missed a turn somewhere thanks to poor cellular service. and. I missed two bridges on my list, the Bridgeton and the McAllister. I could have consulted a paper map that I had with me, but we were getting hungry and decided to just go ahead and get some lunch. Rockville is a beautiful town about 75 miles west of Indianapolis. With a population of a little over 16,000 people, it is the county seat of Park County. We are going to lunch here at the 36 Saloon. With a relaxed roadhouse country vibe, the 36 Saloon serves American comfort food and barbecue. There is family dining, three full bars, and a game room with two pool tables and darts. There is a place for large groups and a seasonal outdoor deck and bar called the Hog Pit. It is decorated with animal trophies, award-winning wood carvings, antiques, and of course my favorite, Harley Davidson decor. After a great relaxing lunch, we take a walk around and check out the hog pit. And of course this motorcycle sitting here on the corner. It is back to the motorcycles as we head out towards home. Rockville has been the headquarters for the Park County Covered Bridge Festival that is held every October since it started in 1957. The Covered Bridge Festival starts in, on the second Friday in October and lasts for 10 days. It showcases the county's 31 historic covered bridges and features authentic arts and crafts, fantastic food, and beautiful fall foliage. Here in Rockville, during the festival, there are vendors of homemade, handmade, primitive, and antique items. Vendors serve a variety of food each day. Storefront businesses around the square are open for additional shopping. An art gallery, historical museum, and the 1883 train depot are open for a unique cultural experience. Since I did not get to pick up those last two bridges on my list, Richard has a surprise for me. A bonus bridge. Then there is the route we are taking to get there. Sometimes it is the unplanned routes and the stops that we make that turn out to be the best part of the adventure. The sweeping curves and the afternoon sun dappling through the trees is spectacular. What a bonus this route truly is. State Route 234 is definitely the highlight route of my day.
We are in Montgomery County near Shades State Park and there is Deers Mill Covered Bridge. It was built in 1878 by Joseph J. Daniels and crosses Sugar Creek. This bridge is a burr arch double span bridge, 275 feet long with 18 feet of overhang on each end. Today the bridge is closed to motorized traffic and was bypassed in 1968 by a new bridge that carries State Route 234 over Sugar Creek. The area is popular for canoeing and camping. The bridge is maintained as an attraction and is open to pedestrians. I would say this is my favorite bridge of the day. Now I do a lot of thinking while I ride. Today I ask myself, why did they build covered bridges the way that they did? Why go to the added expense, time, material, and labor to build bridges that were covered? I did some research on covered bridges. You may want to check out the indiana.gov website, which is where I found some interesting information, including a couple of maps one of Indiana from 1937 and the other from 1998. These show where the covered bridges were during those times. On the site, there's also some detail about the bridges, when they were built, the waterways they cross, and the truss types. I will link the website down in the notes section below. The American Society of Civil Engineers suggests that perhaps 10,000 covered bridges were built in the United States between 1805 and 1885. According to the website, Indiana's covered bridge era began in the early 1830s when the National Road first crossed the state. The first Hoosier covered bridge was completed in 1835 in Henry County. It is estimated that between 400 and 500 covered bridges may have existed in Indiana alone. Now the answer to my question, why build a covered bridge? The answer, because the bridges were constructed with timber, they were covered to protect them from elements. In addition, they were often the largest covered structures in a community and were sometimes used for revival meetings, weddings, or political rallies. Two major Indiana covered bridge builders, J.J. Daniels and Joseph A. Britton, lived in the Rockville area, and a third, A.M. Kennedy, lived in Rushville. This explains the concentration of covered bridges in Park and Rush counties. Between them, they built 158 bridges in Indiana. Many bridges have fallen victim to local apathy, the forces of nature, arson, and or careless driving. The Indiana Covered Bridge Society is trying to raise awareness and appreciation of these vanishing structures and their impact on local history. It has been a spectacular day. I am thankful to God for watching over us and keeping us safe. I am thrilled that there were no problems with my motorcycle. And most importantly, I am thankful to our dear friend Richard who came with me on this ride. He showed me some great bridges and some of God's magnificent countryside. I could not be happier. That was an awesome trip for me, but I have to admit, you would have been miserable on yeah. this trip. Well, I was following her <laughs> and tracking her quite a bit today. I would get on uh, my the iPhone map and just track her because we're on location, share locations. And I was saying, oh, when I saw her doing this and then she started heading the other direction and not home, and it's like, I am so glad I did not do that. So we've been gone at least nine, 10 hours, and it was great. But I'm telling you, I have never viewed the Indiana roads like I did today. So being out on the motorcycle, that open air, actually feeling that road was amazing. And I'm so glad to be able to be at the place where I grew up 
in some of the familiar places where I grew up and got to spend that time out on the road. That is the one thing I wish I could have shared with you. Well, if you haven't done so already, we invite you to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you're alerted when new content is available. Also, don't forget to hit that like button and put your comments in the comment section below. It does help our channel. So, until next time, God bless and safe riding out there. Where you